Welcome to Bogey Lanes in East Brookfield, Massachusetts for the semi-final match in the Women's Pro Series team event. In this match, the team of Marion Johnson, Kim Pelletier, and Cindy Colley will be taking on Joanne Manser, Taryn Dumay, and Tina Ward. Both of these teams have made their way through several matches of head-to-head -head qualifying in order to determine their seeding, and then uh, a couple of rounds of playoffs to arrive at the semifinal. And Marion Johnson begins with a strike on lane one. Great way to start. Let's have a look at this replay. Pretty uh, high one-two pocket hit here. The five goes into the six, into the ten. And you can see the seven pin over there is the last one to go. So that's a great way to start. Joanne Manser with an eight drop, leaving the three five. And then she goes by the three five, so she'll uh, be trying to come out with a ten. And it is a ten box for Joanne Manser. Joanne is from. Amesbury, Massachusetts. <laughs> and Joanne Manser comes in pretty full on the head pin, dropping six. Marion Johnson with an eight drop, and both bowlers looking at splits. Joanne has the two. Four, seven, and ten. And she gets everything but the ten pin. And Marion Johnson trying to convert that four ten, but she wasn't able to get the ten. So it'll be a nine fill on the strike. And Joanne with a ten, and Marion Johnson with a nine in the second box. Bogey Lanes, as you know, is a frequent site for pro tournaments. They host the Western New England Tour every year, and also the Men's Pro Series earlier this year. A couple of nice pocket hits there. Joanne Manser dropping nine, leaving the 10 pin. And Marion Johnson leaving a 7-10 with some wood that might make it possible. And Joanne's got the spare. Marion not quite able to make the 7-10. She got the 10, but nothing touched the 7. So she'll take a 10 box. Joanne kind of dropped that ball, just Kind of a pitch out, just taking out the 10 pin. But that happens every so often. And she'll try and bounce back. Good second ball, but she comes a little bit too high on the head pin and punches through the middle. Mary Johnson, is she going to get that 6 7 10 to go? Not quite. She had a nice piece of wood in front of the 6 10. Rolled across, but just didn't quite catch the 7 pin. And Joanne with an eight box. Did well to work it out for an eight. And Joanne Manser with a splash on the head pin and she leaves a 7-10 split. Several pieces of wood that might help her make this. She's consulting with her teammates to uh, try and get an idea of how to play it. And she doesn't quite get the 10 pin. Mary Johnson runs down that spare 1, 2, or rather 1, 3, 6, 9, 10. Good shot there. And Joanne Manser with a 10 box. 
we'll take a look at the scoreboard. Marion with 58 plus a ball and Joan Manser with 48. That will bring up Karen Dumay on lane two and Kim Pelletier on lane one. Karen and Kim are both members of the once a month Sunday Pro League that meets up in New Hampshire at Park Place Lanes. And there's a nice shot by Karen Dumay for this pair. She had this diamond on the right side plus the seven pin and you will see she goes pretty high on the three pin the ball kicks the five over into the seven so that's a nice shot right there Kim Pelletier picks the five pin for a spare to match the spare by Karen to begin Karen Dumay drops seven on the spare. Kim with just a three fill, she took out the three, six, and nine, missed the head pin to the right. And Karen trying to kick the three over into the seven, doesn't quite catch the three. So both bowlers will be open in the second box. And that'll be an eight for Karen Dumay. And it's also an eight for Kim Pelletier. Kim, in addition to bowling in this event, is also serving as the tournament director with the assistance of Melissa Casey. Karen Dumay with a full hit on the head pin and she leaves a 7-10. We've been seeing a lot of that 7-10 split in the early going. Karen has a couple of pieces of wood at an angle in front of the 10 that might give her some help. But not quite. But isn't able to get the 7. Karen will take a nine. Kim Pelletier with an eight box. And a nice ball in the one-two pocket by Karen Dumay. She drops eight, leaving the five, ten with a couple of pieces of wood. And Kim Pelletier also in the one two pocket and, and she has a split also before six seven nine. Piece of wood at an angle. And Karen's not quite able to get anything to go over and take out the ten. And Kim also opens, she takes out the four seven with the second ball. Karen Dumay with a ten. And Kim will have a nine. Karen Dumay with a nice one-two pocket hit. She drops nine, leaving the six pin with some wood out in front of it. And Kim Pelletier misses the head pin, but gets a pretty good break. She leaves. The one, three, five, not an easy spare, but uh, she did well to get seven out of that. <clears throat> Karen Dumay with the spare. Let's see what Kim can do with this one, three, five combination. And she goes to the right and just takes out the three pin, so she'll be open. We'll take a look at the scoreboard in just a moment. It'll be an eight box for Kim. Kim with 48 half, and Karen with 54 plus a ball. And that was actually a 49 for um, Joanne Manser. 
So that brings up Tina Ward and Cindy Colley. Tina Ward with a 9 drop on lane 2. And Cindy Colley hits the head pin a little too full, goes straight through. Leaves a spread eagle. Tina Ward all over that 5 pin. And Cindy takes out the left side. So she'll be trying to work this out for a 10. And it'll be a 9. Tina Ward filling the spare that she started off with. That is going to be a 5 fill. Cindy Colley with one three pocket hit, kind of light. Drop seven, leaving the two, four, and eight. That's another difficult spare. And Tina Ward gets the pin to roll off the, the uh, right side wall and come back into the four seven, but it doesn't take out the seven, so it'll be an open box, and it'll be a 10 in a second. And Cindy Colley will have a 7. Tina Ward bowls right here at Bogey Lane, so this is a home game for her. Cindy Colley bowls out of Fico's Bowl in Franklin, where full disclosure is that uh, she's my teammate in the Thursday Night Doubles lead over at Fico's. And Cindy carries me like a bucket of sand. She bails me out on a regular basis. Tina with a nice bid on that 6-8 split. Not quite able to get it. Cindy Colley had a 4-5-7-9 split and just went by the 5 pin. So it'll be a 10 box for Cindy Colley and a 9 for Tina Ward. I might add that Cindy Colley is also a member of the Sunday Pro League at Park Place. And I should also mention that she won the first Women's Pro Series event of the year this past fall. And Cindy with a spare taking down that 1-2 combination. Two pinner. Tina Ward with a 10 box. And Tina with a six drop, leaving the four horsemen right side. Cindy Colley punches out the half Worcester on the spare, just takes, takes out the two and eight. Dina Ward with a nice try, but she doesn't quite get the 10 pin. Just takes out the 136, so she'll be open. And Cindy Colley throws the same ball she just threw, so she's gonna have to work it out. And it'll be a 10 box for Tina Ward and just a 5 for Cindy. So let's take a look at the scores at the halfway point. Tina Ward with a 54 half. Cindy Colley with 43. So right now it is a 10 pin lead for Tina Ward. Joanne Manser and Karen Dumay. And there's an 8 drop by Marion Johnson on lane 2. Kind of a light 1-3 pocket hit. But she got some good sidewall action. Leaves a 5-8. Joanne Manser with a 7 drop. And Marion makes the 5-8. That'll be a spare in the 6. Joanne Manser will be open. She's still got the 1 and 7. be a nine box.
Aaron Johnson working on this fair. She misses the head bend to the right, but gets a pretty good break and leaves the one, four, and seven piece of wood in front of the four, seven that might help her a little bit. Meanwhile, Joanne with just a one drop. And there is a spare by Marion Johnson. Let's have a look at it on replay. You'll see that she hits this one perfectly. Left side of the head pin, the ball goes over and takes out the 4-7. Possibly with a little assistance from that wood. And Joanne Manser bounces back with the spare. Let's have a look at this one. After kind of throwing a pitch out on the first ball, she bounces right back, smashes the 1-2 pocket and converts the spare to stay even with Marion Johnson. Marion with a, a good ball in the one-two pocket, but she has uh, doesn't get much to show for it. Just a five drop, and she leaves the six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Piece of wood at an angle in front of the six, nine, ten. It might be useful. I'm not sure how she can really cover all five pins with this. She hits it really high and almost takes out, almost takes, uh, converts the spare. Gets everything but the seven pin. Joanne with a three fill on her spare and then she took out three more in the second ball. Marion with a 10. And Joanne also with a 10. Johnson with a four drop. And Joanne Manser with a solid one two pocket hit, dropping eight and leaving the five nine. And that's a nice bid by Marion Johnson trying to convert that four drop. And Joanne just goes by the five pin, so. Both bowlers will be open. And it'll be a nine for Marion. And a ten for Joanne Manser. Marion Johnson missing the head pin left, dropping five. Joanne Manser. Missing the head pin to the right, and she drops seven. Slightly better leave. One, two, ten, with a piece of wood behind the head pin. Let's see what Marion Johnson can do with this four horsemen right plus the seven. She goes a little bit too full on the head pin, and the three is deflected around the six ten, so she'll have an open box. And Joanne Manser will also have an open box as she goes to the right of the head pin. She's still looking at the one and two. So Marion Johnson will finish with an 8 box, and Joanne Manser will finish with a 9. So checking the scoreboard is a 16, it's actually only a 6 pin lead minus the fill ball, because that, that uh, spare, the computer hasn't put the spare by Karen Dumay up on the score sheet. So it's essentially tied as uh, the team of Manser Dumay and Ward are down by six minus whatever Karen puts on this spare. And she punches through the middle. I think that's a three drop. Not sure if it's three or four. Yeah, I guess that was a four fill on the spare. Uh, from here, it's a little hard to see the nine pin. So that cuts it to just a two pin lead for Johnson, Pelletier, and Colley. Kim Pelletier with a one two pocket hit, leaving a two four five triangle. And Karen Dumay with the same leave. But some piece of wood next to the three pin that could be tricky. And Kim felt there with a nice bid on that triangle, but she just got a little bit too much of the, the uh, two pin. And the five remains. 
Karen goes by the three pin. And thanks to the wood, she got the four and five, but left the two pin. That's a nine for Kim Pelletier and a 10 for Karen Dumais. So this is a very tight match. Should be a Almost tied. Karen Dumay with a nine drop, leaving an eight pin. And Kim with a four drop, and then she threw the second ball in the same spot, so she's gonna need an out. Karen Dumay with the spare. And Kim with an eight box. Not too bad after the four drop. And Kim, once again, on the three pin. This time she gets a little bit better result. Leaves the one, two, and ten. And a piece of wood in front of the ten that makes this a very makeable spare. Meanwhile, Karen Dumay with a five bill on the spare. And Kim just gets the two pin. She goes to the left of the head pin. So Kim will have an 8. She's not too happy with that. And Karen Dumay also with an 8 box. Kim Pelletier with a strike. Let's have a, have a look at the replay. She goes very high on the head pin. And she gets a splash. You can see the 2 and 3 pins go to the sidewalls. And... I think that's the 10 pin that goes off the wall and then bounces over and spins into the six. That's a strike for Kim Pelletier. And Karen almost matches it with a strike. She drops nine. She's got the seven pin with a piece of wood in front of it. No problem. Spare for Karen Dumay. See what Kim Pelletier can do with that strike. And she, again, has a pretty full hit on the head pin. Not quite as full. This time she drops seven, leaves the four, seven, and ten. Meanwhile, Karen Dumay put six on that spare. So Kim will try and, well, she'll put a nine on the strike in that tenth box. So that means that going into the last five boxes, Tina Ward's team has a five pin, or rather a three pin lead over Cindy Colley's team. As Tina and Cindy will finish the match. So you couldn't ask for a much closer match than this. Cindy Colley will be open in the sixth, and so will Tina Ward. Cindy with a nine. And Tina Ward also with a nine box. Actually, I think that was an eight box for Cindy Colley. Again, it's a little bit hard to see the back pin of a double pin combination from here. Cindy Colley with a six drop leaving the four horsemen left with a pin, a piece of wood frozen on the head pin from behind. She might have to actually miss the head pin. And she tried to do that, uh, tried, to, tried to go around it and get the pin to spin backwards and take out the head pin, but it actually may not have been frozen on the head pin. So. Anyway, it's a 10 box for Cindy Colley. Tina Ward will be trying to match it with a 10. And she does. Okay. Sure enough, that was a, a 
Cindy Colley did have an eight box and a six. So it's a four pin lead for Tina Ward, Karen Dumay, and Joanne Manser going into the eighth box. Cindy Colley drops eight, leaving the one and two. Tina Ward also dropping eight, leaving the four, ten. And Cindy goes by the, the uh, one, two. So it's important in a close match to get every last stick if possible. And Cindy makes a 10. You really have to take care of your pinning. And both bowlers do that with, with 10. So it's still a four pin lead for Tina Ward's team with two boxes to go. And Cindy Colley with kind of a thin hit. Missing the head pin to the left, just taking out the two, five, and eight. And Tina Ward hits the head pin, but leaves the uh, three, four, six, ten split. And so they're both going to be open, and again, the third ball, it's all about the third ball here. They'll be trying to pick as many pins as they can. And Cindy Colley with an eight box. And Tina Ward trying to make it a gain if possible. And she has got a nine, it's a 10 box. So that makes it a six pin lead as you take a look at the replay. She cuts the three pin over in front of the four and then it comes off the wall and takes out the four. So it's a six pin lead for Tina Ward's team coming down to the 10th box. That means Cindy Colley is obviously going to have to throw a mark. And she has a very light head pin hit in the 1-3 pocket and she leaves a tricky, a very tricky shot to say the least. 2, 6, 7, 8, and 10. She does have some wood at an angle to the right of the 2 pin. Let's see what she can do with it. And Wow, that goes. That's a terrific shot by Cindy Colley. Let's have a look at this. She uses this wood, and you'll see that the, the wood goes, uh, spins over into the two, eight, and finally the seven. The wood covers all three while the ball takes out the six, ten. That is a clutch spare by Cindy Colley in the tenth. That was absolutely mandatory that she make that. And Tina Ward will be open, but it's very important again that she take out everything, uh, everything possible with the third ball. She's got a pin as well as she can, and she gets a nine. So that means that it's a uh, five-pin difference. So Cindy Colley needs on this last ball five pins to tie, six to win, and she's got seven. So that's clutch right there. That's a uh, that's going to be a two-pin win for Cindy Colley, Kim Peltier, and Marion Johnson, and they will move on to the final match, which we will have shortly.